wood turned. No job too big or too small. Hi everybody, Chip and Deb. Hey. Back uh, for in the wood shop and thought we'd talk a little bit about as the wood turned and how that came to be and more importantly a little bit about our philosophy on making pepper mills. Uh, we started uh, as the wood turned I guess back in 2001. Long yeah. time ago. Long time ago when we were in Texas. Uh, Deb was sitting around one night watching a cooking show and she saw uh, Sarah Moulton at the time was on the cooking channel and she had a pepper mill similar to this and Deb had said to me, why don't uh, you make me one of those? And I, of course, being a woodworker and having all this equipment, I said, well, of course I can. But I said to her, make it yourself. <laughs> make it yourself. <laughs> I might have put it a little bit nicer now, but why don't you learn to make it? And so Deb came down to the shop. She spent some time on the lathe and learned to do a lot of wood turning and, and learned to actually make them. We've made so many over the years. You can see in the front here that there is a pile of uh, photo albums and just uh, envelopes with photos in that we took pictures of every one that we sold. We've made hundreds over the years. I'll tell you how far back the passion actually goes. Uh, we have 35 millimeter slides of pepper mills. Now most of you watching this probably don't know what a 35 millimeter slide is, but no. uh, we actually had a camera one time that took these and we had one of those things that you, uh, projector, that you, you had to have to, to, to see them on. Uh, but we have a lot. Couple things about our philosophy on pepper mills. We find that about a 12 to 14 inch pepper mill works the best. We've made them bigger, we've made them smaller, seem to work the best. Anything about two and three quarters to three inches in diameter is about right. Uh, gets much larger than that, it's a little hard to hold. Um, and the body, whatever the length of the body is, or the height of the body, in this case about 10 inches, the cap should be approximately 20% of that. So 10 inches, two inches, we get our 12 inch pepper mill. Uh, a lot of the designs we have here are a couple of other things that were left uh, after Deb had stopped making pepper mills. Um, but this is the one we were actually making when she stopped. Who want to tell them when she stopped? Well, this was the pepper mill I was working on, and if you notice, it's not waxed. I started to wax it on the um, lathe, and I did it with a cloth and wax, and I got the cloth caught in the turning style and it pulled my wrist into the wood and kept going and broke my wrist. Therefore, I haven't been down since. I had had surgery and uh, learned a valuable lesson with the lathe. Yeah, I think that's right. We've, we all learn things. Um, well, we learned a lot about design, but we also learned uh, a lot about wood turning. And even though Deb knew not to wrap the hand, her hand around the rag, and I know better, and, and most of the people watching this video probably know better as well, uh, you get tired, you've been doing this all day, you've made four or five of these things, um, your hands are getting tired, you're on your last one, you're trying to get it knocked out at the end of the day, and you make a mistake. And so, you know, valuable lesson for us, we get to the point where we get tired or we get a little uh, maybe aggravated because the design's not flowing right or the way we want it, we just quit. Uh, and move on for another day. Uh, so a little bit about the theory of, of our pepper mills. One of our favorites obviously is the twist design. Talked about that in a little earlier video that we did, uh, or the video that we're filming now uh, for a pepper mill that we're making for our good friends of ours. And this is actually the blank that uh, was glued up and squared up and ready to go on the lathe. I'm just trying to convince Deb to go ahead and come back down and at least give me some design cues because over a period of time we've also made this problem we've had our mistakes with our designs I mean this one was one of the ones that probably too thin too tall yes yeah it doesn't fit this doesn't look right um, we did have a couple of the other ones that um, that worked out pretty well I mean this was a nice design uh, this one was actually in the inventory to sell when we quit but uh, I think we would have probably sold that one if we kept the website up uh, some of the other ones just didn't work well uh, great use of wood, but uh, wow, I, when I glued this one up, I don't know what I was thinking because get that light colored wood with both those dark colors in there with the rosewood, the redwood, and the yellow, yellow heart on the side here. Uh, it just didn't look good when it came up. Probably a good idea at the time, but, but didn't look so good uh, now. We've actually had, uh, we've only ever had two that come back. All of our pepper mills are guaranteed for life, our life, not theirs. Uh, <laughs> but we've only ever had two that come back. Uh, one was a cu uh, custom job that a lady had ordered. She ordered Purple Heart, and Purple Heart ranges anything from kind of a, like a brown? 
purple to brown. Yeah, purple to brown. And um, the one we made actually came out a little bit brown. We weren't 100% happy with it, but it was completely the design she wanted and we had sent it to her. And, and she had asked that we'd make her the same one, but, but in purple. So we did that. Uh, and then we had, uh, we had a couple other ones come back that just people have washed them and so on, got them wet, and the wax tends to fade a little bit. And we spool them up on the lathe. In fact, this one here is, is already taken apart and ready to, to go on the lathe to be re-waxed. It's been sanded. It just needs to go on the lathe and be um, refinished. I think the last thing to talk about is probably just a fundamental design challenge that we came up with over the years, especially on our, um, our twisted design. And that is if you um, just cut this all as one piece. So if I were to take this blank and Deb were to cut this down, blank's about 16 inches long, she could cut that into a 12 inch pepper mill without a problem. She'd leave a uh, space in the middle and then cut the, uh, the tenon, right, mm -hmm. to the top, which is, you know, this part that goes into the hole in the top. She so would cut the tenon and that would give us about two inches of wasted wood right in the middle. Well, when you do that, we found that the design doesn't line up, that the, the continuity of the design of the wood shifts over a little bit because I've taken two inch piece out of the middle of this. So we find a better way to do it over a period of time. What we do is we actually go ahead and just take the pepper mill and cut it on the bandsaw so we lose the least amount of wood. We'll cut that blank before we turn it. Uh, then we'll go ahead and drill the holes just like we normally would. And then we'll, we'll glue up a, uh, a one inch dowel in the end made out of the same material. And that allows us to uh, keep the grain of the wood. This is actually just a mock-up that we used uh, to show people what they look like. But you can see how the grain lines match up perfectly when we do it that way. So a lot of things that we've learned. Um, some things work really well, some don't. But most importantly, we learned to be safe on the lady. Yes, definitely. So hopefully Deb will get back down here and start making some pepper mills. At the very least, when I uh, turn this one for our friends, I'm going to make sure she comes down to give me some design cues. She did accuse me one time that every pepper mill I turned resembled some part of the male anatomy. So I probably really need somebody with more of an artist's touch. Anyhow, if you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. The website uh, address and the email address are at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks.